Hey there, and welcome to Costa Rica Story. And I have to say it's a very beautiful morning here in Uvita, Costa Rica. Where I live, I don't have a view of the ocean or a mountain view or any view at all. I'm, I'm pretty much in the middle of the, the forest, the bosque, the jungle, whatever you want to call it. But it's, it's about 6 a.m. and it's before things are really rolling here. So it's, it's really peaceful. My favorite time of the day, the mornings here in Costa Rica. That being said, the topic of today's video is reasons why people leave Costa Rica. And it's a sad thing if anybody has to leave Costa Rica. So let's start off with number one. And I, this is a lot of times when I'm making videos, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. And this is number one, the number one reason why people leave Costa Rica. Economic reasons. People come here and they expect they're going to be able to make money here or they just come here without enough money. That line where it says, when you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. So people come here without enough economic resources or an, a plan, a real plan, not just uh, pie in the sky uh, hopes, you're gonna be in trouble. If you don't have a good plan economically coming here, it's, there's a lot of stress involved. No matter how good in business you think you are or how hard working you are, you can't legally work in Costa Rica. You can start a business in Costa Rica, but starting a business in Costa Rica is not a simple thing. There's a lot of red tape and it's not an easy task. So economic reasons, a huge reason why people have to leave Costa Rica. You miss your family. And a lot of times, you know, it's, it happens. I see it with people, especially people that come here to retire. And all of a sudden they realize they're not going to see their grandkids, you know, and as much as they would like. And that, and that's, that's a reality. And you have to weigh, you know, your time with your grandkids with your time in the place that you're, you've always dreamed of, of uh, living. Trouble adjusting to the slower pace of Costa Rica. And as much as I try to fight the stereotypes, sometimes the stereotypes are true. Sometimes it does take longer if you're waiting in line somewhere or you're trying to get things done. I have to admit, sometimes it does take longer. For me, it's not really a problem. I've, I've adjusted to, to the pace of life here. And depending on where you come from, you may have trouble adjusting. If you're used to things happening like in a, a lickety split really fast fashion, sometimes things don't happen quite as fast here, especially if you live closer to the beach, it seems even more mellow. So some people just can't adjust to the slower pace of living in Costa Rica and they have to go back to the rat race, what they thought they were trying to escape. Health reasons. And sometimes, you know, you move to Costa Rica and then you get a, a serious illness and maybe you are more comfortable with the doctors in your home country. People do come to Costa Rica for, it's, it's famous for medical tourism, dental tourism, but sometimes people are more comfortable with the doctors in their home country and maybe the service is faster that way. So unexpected illness is the reason why some people leave Costa Rica. You're a couple and one of you is just not happy. And usually if you're moving to Costa Rica as a couple, usually there's one person that is the, the driving force behind that and the other one agrees or goes along with it. And a lot of times when you get here, it's, it's not what the other person hoped. Maybe you're happy, but the spouse isn't happy or vice versa. So you have one unhappy person and one happy person and you need two happy people or it just isn't gonna work. So a couple not being on the same page is another reason why people leave Costa Rica. So your kids aren't happy. 
And that's a huge one for a lot of people because kids have a hard time adjusting sometimes. And you add in the move to Costa Rica, all the cultural differences they have to adjust to, the language differences, leaving their friends from their old school back in your home country. So it's an adjustment for kids. But that being said, sometimes being a kid makes it easier to adjust. So it, it really depends on, on, on the kids, on the family, and on your situation. You're tired of sticking out. So when you're a gringo here in Costa Rica, no matter how you try to, to dress or act to fit in, you always really do stick out a little bit as a gringo. And it, you just have to get comfortable with that. And some people can't because when they, you know, it's one of those things people see you walking down the street, they know, oh, you know, he's a little bit different. But you have to be able to accept that and embrace that. But that's, that's part of the stress of, of living in Costa Rica as a gringo. You're, you do, you do uh, stand out a little bit. But it's really not a bad thing. It's just, it's just a thing. the climate. And when you, anybody moving here, of course they know, okay, it's hot, it's humid, and it, it's got its rainy season. But you don't know until you get here the intensity of this sometimes. And it varies. Like, for instance, this year, our rainy season has been really lacking. We do get rain, but it's just like, a, compared to the last years I've lived here, this rainy season has been, been really lame. It doesn't give you those powerful storms. A few heavy downpours we've had this year, but you know we're lacking in rain. We're in a uh, rain deficit for what we should get here because we're a jungle. We need we need the rain to keep things green. So the climate is tough, and humidity. You don't really, you can't really appreciate the humidity until you're in the middle of the soup because it, it is it's really humid. You do actually adjust to it eventually, but I mean it's still always you feel it. You feel it. And uh, if you're somebody that's from a cooler climate, sometimes people miss the four seasons of, of, you know, the winter, spring, summer, and fall. For instance, back in the northeast of the United States. Me? No, I don't, I don't miss the snow. I don't miss the cold. But some people do. You get nostalgic for it. Sometimes I might get a little nostalgic for the, for the cold, and I'll, I'll go look at some pictures. That's all it takes for me. Negative people. And in life, you're going to encounter negative people. You're going to encounter naysayers. I don't know what we want to call them. But they're the people that always bring up the, all the negative all the time. And if you surround yourself with this kind of people or you, you have a lot of these people in your circle, it can affect your, your um, mindset. And this can be people back in the States or this can be people here. You can have people back in the States saying, oh, what, what are you doing in Costa Rica? Are you stupid? Blah, blah, blah. This is, this is people that probably have never you know, done any exploring in their life or they don't understand what it is to follow your dream. And also you get people here. There's a lot of really negative people here that they're always bashing Costa Rica, but still they're living here in Costa Rica. I, I don't really understand those people other than they're, they're the kind of people that just like to vent. You know, there's, there are negative things here, of course there are, but you don't dwell on them, you dwell on the positive things, and you, you just have a better mindset. So negative people can affect your mindset, and it, it does affect some people to the point where the, it does play a, a role in them leaving Costa Rica. So not everybody is a social butterfly. Some people have trouble meeting people and making friends, maybe have some social anxiety that makes it a little harder to mingle. And when you move to a new place, especially like in my situation, I moved here alone, a single person by myself moving to Costa Rica. But I had a, a desire to go out and talk to people. It was just, COVID was just starting to let up the restrictions and I was just, I had a hunger for talking to people because I'd been a year without really any, any human interaction to speak of, because I was working from home and you just you couldn't go out very much. So that was part of my incentive when I first got here. And I met a lot of people and 
I've met, I continue to meet a lot of people, but if you don't make the effort to go out and mingle and meet people, that can happen. Bad experience with crime or somehow getting ripped off, maybe on a property deal or something like that. And this happens to people and it, it's, of course it's gonna color your experience if you have a, a negative experience like that. And it's just one of those things that if it does happen, it's how you deal with it is, is up to you. The infamous vacation mentality. So you've visited Costa Rica a few times on vacation and you really like it. You know, you, you hang out at the beach and you have your little cocktails at the beach and sunsets and it's great. But then you move here and you realize, you know, it's just, it is, in essence, it's just another place you're living. It just happens to have all these other cool things going on at the same time. But at its core, it's just another place to live. It's the same sky. It's the same ground that you had back in your home country. It just happens to be, you know, in, in Costa Rica. But the realities of day-to-day -day life are never going to go away. You have to deal with these things and you're not on vacation anymore. You live here. Some people can't deal with that. So the language barrier. And of course, this is a huge one. It's a huge one for me. It's a huge one for anybody moving here if you're not fluent in the language. And it's something we all need to work on and it affects a lot of the other points I made about fitting in because if you speak Spanish, it's easier to meet friends. It's easier to go about your day-to-day -day business here in Costa Rica. It's just overall easier to function here. And having those Spanish language skills can really help you make your adjustment here in Costa Rica. And speaking of making the adjustment here in Costa Rica, I can help you with that with my travel and relocation services at CostaRicaMove.com. I've got a day adventure here in Uvita that's a lot of fun. I do video counseling and a plethora of other things that you can find at CostaRicaMove.com. And if you'd like to just contact me, you can contact me at hola at CostaRicaStory.com. But that's all I've got for this edition of Costa Rica Story. Make sure you like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, but most importantly, share this video and this channel with a friend. Hasta luego.